Welcome to worship with Our Savior's Lutheran Church from Rochester, Minnesota. To start our worship today, let's share our highs and lows.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant love of God. God who searches us and knows us. You have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sin, and the broken systems that blind and bind us. We distrust those who are not like us. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We exploit the earth and its resources, failing to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Open our eyes and our hearts to reveal your love and mercy and guidance. Amen. You have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promises of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and spirits, reconciling peace. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Today we are in the season of Epiphany, a season of light revealing Christ here with us. Today we are celebrating Christ's baptism. Jesus without sin, without need of repentance, but because he wanted to be one with us, chose to be baptized. In line with all the other people, could disgrace his reputation, but he didn't care. He stood in that line with other sinners, though sinless himself, in a radical act of solidarity. He stepped into the same murky waters, yoking us with him and yoking us with one another. And that is what baptism is about. Today, January 10th, 2021, we live in a wilderness of division and discord. We live in a time and a place where we seem to be pitted against each other. We are afraid, afraid of what might happen today or what might happen tomorrow or the tomorrows after that. We all, me included, need to remember that radical day of Jesus' baptism, when the heavens tore open. We need to hear it today. We need to hear God say, you are beloved. And we need to feel it today. And we need to live it today. God is here. Our God's only son came to this earth, not as a king or not as an all-powerful ruler, but as an infant. Jesus didn't claim to be better than anyone else. Jesus didn't claim to be more than anyone else. And as recorded in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus' first act was not to be separated but to stand in line with us, to step in that murky water with everyone else. Now today, as you remember Jesus' baptism, we remember our own baptisms. Whether it be here at this font, or maybe in another church's font, or maybe at your home, or maybe at the hospital, wherever it was, I assure you that same spirit that broke open the heavens on Jesus' baptism broke into your life as well. Broke into your life and called you beloved. And that is the spirit of unity. Born into sin, we become forever unified with Jesus. And isn't that truly amazing? And that is the easy part. That is what God does for us. Our part is to live, act, and love as unified people of God, baptized in the same waters, beloved by the same God. Our God is loose in our hearts and was loose on our baptismal day, whispering over us again and again, you are beloved, until you finally hear it 
until you finally feel it, until you finally live this love. We are called as baptized Christians to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are not called to ask if they believe the same as we do. We are not called to ask if they are baptized in the same water as we were. We are not called to only love if they look like us and dress like us and talk like us. We are called to love our neighbor as one body of Christ. Bishop Regina Hassanelli wrote a liturgy for baptism. And when I had the privilege of working under her at her congregation in Goodyear, I heard these words. In this congregation called St. Luke's, a church I grew up in, the baptismal font that my brothers were baptized in, I heard these words. The world will call you many things. The world will try to rename you. But today, we echo the voice of the triune God, and we call you beloved child. As tears filled my eyes that first time I heard them, because we've all been there. Not only have we all been called names, but I'm certain that maybe we have assigned names to others as well. But here, here in the waters of baptism, God says, you are beloved. And then this continues. As the liturgy continues, not only in Bishop Regina's liturgy, but in our baptismal liturgy, we respond. <laughs> this is now a child of God, part of our family, and that takes work on our part. We promise this to everyone who has gone before us and everyone who will go after us. We say, when we see you begin to wonder if this name is truly and really yours, we promise to remind you, you are indeed a child of God. We promise to remind you. We promise to remind you that you are beloved. We promise to look through all the labels or whatever else you have heard or read and say, you are a beloved child of God. Martin Luther expresses our need to remember our baptism constantly. Why? Because we need to be reminded these things. We need to be reminded that we are loved so that we can continue to remind others that they are loved, to live in that love and to love others. As we sit here today, let's remember. I want you to dip your finger in some water and make the sign of the cross on your forehead. And repeat these words with me. The world will call you many things. The world will try to rename you. Today, we echo the voice of the triune God. Today, we call you beloved child of God. We cannot love others unless we know and we believe we are loved. So say this until you believe it. Say this until you hear God's voice in your ear, beloved child. And now, when you are ready, 
to love others. If you have someone nearby, mark their forehead. And say to them, when we see you begin to wonder if this new name is really yours, we promise to remind you that you are indeed a child of God. Now, if we were here at church, that would be easy, right? To mark your neighbor. There would be plenty of people around. You would just have to turn, and there someone would be. But today, it's hard. Today, you might be alone, and maybe you aren't, but you are surrounded by your own family, easy to mark their foreheads. Today is hard. It's hard to be a neighbor. It's hard to be siblings in Christ when we are not near each other. So I challenge you all this. Think of someone. Think of someone either in our congregation or in your community that maybe doesn't look like you or talk like you or sound like you or believe like you do. And pick up the phone or pick up a pen and a piece of paper and tell them these words. You are a beloved child of God. On this epiphany season, be the light revealing Christ's love, a love that binds us together. United with the whole church across time and space, let us join our confession with theirs using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God of new life, 
We pray for the church throughout the world, for those who minister in the church, for all who will be baptized this year, and for their godparents and sponsors, that the Holy Spirit will empower the faithful to renounce all that draws us from you and shape us for lives of service, justice, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for the waters of the earth, for the seas, the lakes, the rivers, for the wells that provide drinking water, and for the water that is piped into our homes, that you provide clean and nourishing water for all living things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who raises up the lowly, we pray for all who are in trouble, want, or sickness, for the countless who are suffering with COVID-19, for medical workers, for people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely. And we pray for Wayne, Mark, James, Chris, Jeanette, Bonnie, Byron, Lois, Marcia, Jean, Gil, Travis, Linda, Edith, Ginger, Anna, Ed, Bill, and all those we name now in our hearts and minds. Grant health and wholeness to a world so filled with pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of exploration, we pray for students, for teachers and school administrators, for parents assisting their children in learning from home, and for young people who are finding a way toward graduation. Give resilience to everyone in the search for education. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for our nation facing the evil of white supremacy, for those lured by hatred and violence, for all dealing with new and lasting trauma, for prophets who proclaim uncomfortable truths, that as your beloved children, you inspire all people to work for the harmonious well-being of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of reconciliation, we have seen the damage caused when trust is broken and communities are divided. Help us to hear the pain of our neighbors. Guide us toward the truth. Heal the brokenness among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We pray for those with political power, especially those elected to leadership in our federal government. Give them wisdom discernment, and compassion. Guide them to make decisions that are in the best interest of all of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance, where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination, where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for your continued generosity and support of our congregation's ministry. 
You have enabled our Savior to continue sharing Christ's love and growing in our faith, connecting our faith with our lives. You are invited to continue living into the faith practices of giving to the ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through our website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your gift to the church office. Again, thank you for your continued generosity and for the love of Christ that you share with the world. Thank you for joining us for worship. Whether you're right here in Rochester or somewhere around the world, we're glad that you found us. There are two important upcoming meetings. On Sunday, January 17th, next Sunday, we will have our review for our proposed financial ministry vision. This will include a look back at how we utilized our finances for ministry in 2020 and our plan for 2021. We will also review our voting procedures for the annual congregational meeting, as well as have a trial run of voting in preparation for the annual meeting. On Sunday, January 31st, we will have our annual congregational meeting. This will include voting on the financial ministry vision, elections, and other items important to our congregation's ministry. Both meetings will be held at 1 p.m. on Zoom. A packet of essential information about these meetings was mailed out to you. Please review them carefully and reach out if you have any questions. Continuing the celebration of Jesus' baptism, this Friday, January 15th, we will have a congregational movie night. We will watch the Disney movie Moana. Join us on Zoom beginning at 6 p.m. The movie will start at 6.30 p.m. Afterwards, there will be some time for discussion. The link for this meeting was sent out in the email last week and will be sent in this week's email as well. If you have any questions, please contact Pastor Ben. As always, Please join us today following the initial airing of this service on Zoom for a time of fellowship. The link is available on our website. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms outstretched. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to set the table. So make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine and grape juice as we sing. Now that the table is set, we hear the story of how this holy meal of communion and promise came to be. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And finally, before we eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, we pray. So, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have kept your promise to us in this meal, nourishing us with the gifts of salvation. Fill us with your spirit that we may testify to your goodness, sharing the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus and serving others in your name. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in worship in order to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God. And to help us remember this, I invite you to dip a finger in some water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else on the forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. May God, the Creator, open your eyes to the needs of your neighbors. Jesus, the Beloved, provoke you to unexpected acts of love. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you firmly on the way of justice and peace. Amen. <laughs>
Christ is with you always. And also with you. May you be the light of Christ to someone this week. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship. Have a great week.